When in trouble, go back home to your family. It's a natural human reaction. But here's why in the COVID-19 virus pandemic, it's possibly the worst thing you could do. And why surviving this pandemic could require us to adopt behaviors that are a little counterintuitive. On the 18th of March, Malaysia became one of the latest countries to place restriction on its citizens to slow the spread of the COVID-19 virus, which has to date claimed the lives of some 8,000 people worldwide. Kerajaan memutuskan untuk melaksanakan Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan mulai 18 Mac 2020 hingga 31 Mac 2020 di seluruh negara. It was called a Restriction of Movement Order. But it pretty much triggered a balik kampung scenario, the exact opposite of what was intended. Orang ramai mula hadir di beberapa balai polis untuk mengisi borang makluman pergerakan keluar sebadan negeri adalah membeli tiket pas untuk pulang ke rumah masing-masing dengan segera. The restrictions are actually designed to enforce something called social distancing, which is a proven method to control the spread of infectious diseases that are spread to close contact. The virus gets transmitted through droplets of saliva or mucus, either directly or indirectly. Social distancing removes or reduces the chances of that happening. Social distancing is very important in the condition like uh, coronavirus. Because number one, uh, we don't have a cure. Uh, number two, the vaccines won't be ready for another year or year and a half. So all we have to do in terms of preventing ourselves from catching it is by physical methods. Uh, that is by hand hygiene, personal hygiene, and also social distancing. These social interactions might seem really harmless. Like it's just one person meeting another person. What's the worst that could happen, right? But if you don't practice social distancing, infection rates can go up really quickly in a short period of time. Based on early cases, the R0 of the COVID-19 virus is about 2.2. That means that each infected person could go on to pass the virus to another 2.2 people. For all you math geeks out there, the R0 equals contacts per unit time multiplied by mean infectious period. The secret is to get the R0 value below 1. In that situation, the virus will die off by itself in time because each new infection does not generate more than one transmission. In the absence of a cure, and there is no current cure or vaccine for the COVID-19, the only way we can do that is by limiting the number of contact that we have. And that's the science behind social distancing. For all you non-math geeks out there, just stay at home. The idea of social distancing, especially with this current uh, movement and restriction policy, is they are trying to break the chain of transmission so that whoever may be infected today uh, in the community will keep that infection to himself. Keeping ourselves safe also helps the country because if we have one less infection, there's one less person that can transmit the infection. But with the mishap with the RMO that led to large gatherings with a lot of close contact, experts are already predicting new clusters of infection as a result. What this potentially could have done, we could have brought some of the infection outside of the Klang Valley, which carries a sizable portion of those infected now. That is not what we actually hope to achieve. It is important, therefore, now for the rest of this period of the uh, movement control order for us to stay within our homes as much as we can. Basically, it's important to understand the reasons for social distancing. That is to reduce physical interactions instead of just following the rules that have been announced by the government. This means no to Balai Kampung, no to having your neighbours over for a house party, and no to going to work because you're a workaholic. If you have to meet people, Stay two meters apart, no group hugs and no handshakes. And because infected people might not show symptoms immediately, this applies to everyone, even if you're feeling perfectly healthy. In short, the best way to practice social distancing is to imagine that you already have the virus and you're trying to avoid giving it to anyone else. However, social distancing does not mean isolating yourself. In fact, one of the downsides of social distancing is that it can make us feel lonely and unable to seek help when we need it. So stay in touch with your friends and family and try to offer as much help as you can to those in need without physical contact. We have the technology. While public health is the top priority at the moment, the pandemic will also have an economic impact. The official estimate is a decline in GDP growth of 0.8 to 1.2 percentage points. 
or in value terms, between 11 billion and 17 billion. That's only the hit to price consumption. Uh, if you were to consider the slowdown in private investment, as well as uh, exports, as our trading partners are similarly impacted by the pandemic, we could be facing a sharper than expected decline of the economy. Given that it is a global pandemic that is still at the early stage for most countries, a global recession is increasingly likely and we'll have to prepare for such an eventuality. In times of economic uncertainty, the instinct is to usually save. But spending could actually be the better option. So apart from observing the health rules and regulations, they should continue with their normal spending. It is rational to save rather than spend in times of uncertainties. So those with the means, especially middle income and upper income households, should not hold back investment or purchases of big ticket items such as properties and cars, as well as consumer durables and other lifestyle spending. Continuing spending is necessary to mitigate the economic impact of the epidemic. For those with adequate savings and have the means to pay back, it is a good time to take loans because of the low interest rates, especially if they are able to put the money into more productive uses such as investing in a wider business or acquire new skills and expertise. Another counterintuitive behaviour? Keep working. Stay productive. Like us, producing this episode entirely in the comforts of our respective homes. Yes, this is my home and no, I cannot give you a tour right now because I'm in my boxes. This is unprecedented for most of us. And the fact that it's a virus that no one can see makes it scarier. But we can only survive this by playing our part, no matter how insignificant it might seem. For most of us, that's practicing social distancing, being productive and checking on your loved ones.